24. Uh, this is just factoring general trinomials. Now, um, a trinomial is anything with three nomials, meaning names. So three last names. There's b squared, b, and our constant. What we're going to do is we're going to try to use our factoring tricks and see if we can use any of our tricks, which is the square root method um, or just easy factoring methods. And we're going to see how long it takes to get this one done. And so let's go through this little checklist and we're going to see if we can simplify the problem. So the first question on my checklist says, can I factor anything out of each term? Well, I'm going to look here and I've got 10b squared minus 7b minus 12. And is there anything that divides into each of these numbers? And 7's prime, so right away you can say no. Um, so nothing will factor out, no letters will factor out, so we're good here. So we're going to check that on the checklist. Second question, are there any perfect squares in the front and back? So I'm looking in the front, 10b squared, is that a perfect square? I don't think so. How about 12, not a perfect square as well. So we can move on to the next step, so we can't use any of our tricks yet. So we're going to have to probably go with a tougher way. The last part, uh, third question is do A and C have a lot of factors? And what we're going to do is we're going to look at A and C in the problem. Now this will be A right here. It's the coefficient in front of this first, the square part. And then this would be B and this would be C. Okay. So all I'm going to do is write A which is equal to 10 and set up a column. I'm just going to write the factors out, which is real easy, especially with an easy number like 10. And I'm also going to write the factors of 12. Now, don't worry about the negative yet. Okay, That would make things a lot more complicated. We're just going to get to 12, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So we're looking at C equals 12. And save one more column for something special in case we need it. So it says, do we have a lot of factors for A and C? Let's take a look. Factors of A. Here's how you factor a number. You start with 1, and 1 times 10 will give you 10. 2 goes in 5 times, so 2 times 5 equals 10. Go to 3, 3 doesn't go in, 4 doesn't go in, you're back around to 5, and as soon as you get back around to 5, you'd be 5 times 2, not worth writing again. So let's move on. Next one, C equals 12. We're going to easily just multiply 1 times 12 would be the first factor. 2 times 6 would be 12. And the last one is 3 times 4. You can see we're back around. If we start coming up here, the next number would have been 4. But we're not, it's not worth writing again. So let's just save some time. Okay. So do they have a lot of factors? Are there a lot of options? If we were to use guess and check, would we have to plug in a heck of a lot of numbers? Yes. There's a lot of combinations there. Um, and it's not really necessarily worth trying. Now, if you were to try them, here's the ones you'd start with. You would start from the bottom. So start with 2 times 5 and 3 times 4. This would be your first two terms in your set of parentheses. So you'd put 2x there, 5x there, you put 3 there, and 4 there, and obviously the signs are different because we want to uh, look at this last term. It'll tell you the signs are different, 1 plus 1 minus. And we just try it out, and we test it. We do OI check. If it doesn't work, we'd have to go back, yada, yada. Well, the AC method ensures that you're going to get the right answer the first time, but it does take a little, a little bit of extra work sometimes. So let's take a look at the AC method. What AC means is A times C. So I'm going to take A times C, there's A, C, and if I multiply A times C, it gives me 120. So I have A and C and 120 there, and now all I have to do is factor A, C. Let's see what that looks like. Now this could be a long list, especially on those bigger numbers, um, so sometimes it helps to look at what your goal is. My goal is to get B, have a difference of 7. But I'm going to go through the whole list. It's not that hard. You use your calculator if you need to. All right. 1 times 120. 2 times 60. 3 times 40. 
4 times 30 and 5 times uh, 24 took me a second 6 times 20 7 doesn't go in 8 does it's 8 times 15 9 no 10 yes 10 times 12 and 11 doesn't go so now we're all the way back around you can see where we went 8 to 10 and then we'd be back to 12 going back up so there's no point in writing 12 times 10 15 times 8 we're gonna stop right there okay these are all the factors of 120 quite a few okay but all we're gonna look for is a pair that will give us 7 okay you're gonna use addition or subtraction to get 7 in this case the signs are different we're gonna find the difference alright one in one in 120 is not gonna not gonna make it happen so we'll get rid of that one I'll just put a little scribble by it. 2 times uh, 60, there's no way to add or subtract that one. 3 and 40, that's not even close. 4 and 30. And you could just go ahead and skip right down until you see the one that makes the number you want. And right away, I can tell you 8 and 15, if we subtracted them, would give a 7. So let's circle that. Okay. Now, you know which pair uh, gave you your O and I. Remember, B is just O and I mixed together. If you were to go up here to your original problem, this is F for FOIL. This is O and I added up together. We're trying to use clues to figure out what O and I were. And this is L. Okay, if you're good at Sudoku or things like that, this is, should be real simple for you. Um, so it's just like a little puzzle. So there's O and I mixed together. Now, when we look at the AC method, I circle the two numbers I want. The O must have been 8. I was 15. Okay, that's what the AC method gives to us. It gives us clues. Now, all I want to do is get an 8. How do I get an 8? I pick a number from this column here and a number from this column to somehow give me 8. The only way it's going to happen is this 2 right here and this 4 over here. I'm just going to link them up with a little line here. Just tell me that those were the two I multiplied. And then, watch this trick. Just circle the other two in that pair and link them up. Okay? Now, remember, this gives me my O. It's the 8. So this is the 8, and this was the 15 in here. And that checks. That makes sense. Okay? Now, all I'm going to do is try to figure out how my numbers are going to go in. So I'm going to have 2 x, this is my outer, so it's going to put 2x there, because this is for the part of the a, it's part of the foil, the f part, and then the last, the outer, So this is the uh, outer right here, so the la very last term right there, is going to be the one linked up with 2. Look at that, it worked out perfectly. Okay, So 2x times 4 goes outside. Now we're going to look in here. It's going to be 5x and a 3 or mean the other place. Don't put 5x here because this wouldn't make sense. The x term has to go here, so 5x. And the 3 goes here. Okay? Now I'm just going to check to see which, which one we want to make negative. Um, and it looks like 5 times 3 would be 15. Let's make it that one negative 3. So it would be negative 15 and a positive 4. All we need to do is an OI check to make sure we are right. And we do this every single time because if I make mistakes, you make mistakes, and sometimes they give us prime uh, trinomials that you can't factor. So you always have to OI check. So O is equal to, let's see, 2x times 4, that's 8x. Inner is negative 15 x, combine them, and we get our negative 7x, okay? First try, took a little bit of scratch work over here, but for those of you who need, uh, who don't want to do guess and check over and over and over and over, you, the AC method is fantastic, okay? It's just a process, you don't want to write these steps down. Good.